In League of Legends, support players fight an uphill battle in a thankless role. Their job is to protect their AD carry during the laning phase, literally to make someone else look good. And they sacrifice farm and sometimes their own lives to make that happen. Almost up, he's guarding it now, but, but the baby. But there's a champion that shows everyone, including the fans, that support players aren't the weakest link. Come out and play. He may not be focused on healing or defending allies, but support players who pick Thresh don't care about those things. Because when you have a hook and godlike reads, everyone on the enemy team is already dead. They just don't know it yet. Before League of Legends Season 3, support champions were a pretty mixed bag as players continued to figure the game out. Some were played to help initiate fights, some were more standard enchanters, and others poked the opponent in lane. In some niche cases like Nunu, they had abilities that buffed the AD carry so much that they were played as supports even if that hadn't been the design intention. Up, and he's forced out Templar back, man. Madlife tries to support him. Madlife have to use his ultimate to keep him away. Gets one more stuff, he's going to go down first, but the baby. And Blitzcrank gave supports the chance to make a big play that could bring immediate results. Uni right there, he's gonna flash away and auto attacks from space coming with the Gunslinger passive. Still looking for Archie, hits the hook! Gonna pull him back, he's flashing out space, gets the oh. piercing light! But for the most part early on in League of Legends, supports were often walking ward bots who did little more than help their teammates carry the load. Until January 2013, when players got their hands on Thresh the Chain Warden. What a delightful we shall The champion was built from the ground up as a support, and his kit was a playmaker's dream. Stone comes out from Nick and Reckless. Is he gonna go down there to protect him from Oriana? Oh no! no. He took the lantern, he managed to get away, and they get the shot down on Nick. Diamond goes down as well. Would you believe it? Between Death Sentence. Dark Passage and Flay, Thresh's kit was, at its core, untapped movement potential. All of it could reposition either enemies or allies to create kills for his team and deny them to enemies. The bottom lane dive, though, looks like it's in the eyes. The hook oh, on the impact. A lot of damage through the ignite on early on as well. They're not quite gonna get him. He stays alive finally. First blood to Hanser. Anything on the way out? Rush looks Adrian as well. Lantern's there. Oh my no. god, are you kidding me? But there's another dimension to Thresh's appeal. Unlike many other supports, he wasn't sparkly, shiny, or quirky. He was scary. Come back. Suddenly, playing a support could also mean being a badass incarnation of death itself. Oh, lost souls. Instead of waiting for the right moment to protect his carry, Thresh stalked the lane like a pale green revenant, looking for a moment of weakness to exploit. Every movement and adjustment was a potential opening for a huge play that could instantly secure a kill. The fear of the Chain Warden's long reach hung like an oppressive fog over his lane. And if that hook landed and that chain tightened, his opponent was being dragged down to their end, just another soul collected in his lantern. In a cool nod to esports history, Thresh's name is an homage to Dennis Thresh Fong, the Quake pro who pioneered the WASD keyboard layout and won John Carmack's Ferrari at Red Annihilation in 1997. Thresh instantly made a splash across the game, but there were two pro players who took the champion to the next level in those early years, spreading the Chain Warden's reign of terror far and wide. Thresh's first acolyte to become known as a god was Madlife, a Korean support player. His Blitzcrank was already highly touted, 
so everyone knew he could throw a hook. This one was just a little more evil. But Madlife didn't just show Thresh's mechanical depth, he did something even scarier. Blitz is gonna be able to have a chance to come back. Wansuck again getting caught a bit. How does he hit every single one? Madlife's predictive hooks are immortalized by the player base itself. Any hook that hits an opponent that used movement abilities like Flash is still known to this day as a Madlife hook. What a Madlife. And at his core, it's something like the Madlife moniker that makes Thresh so unique among support champions. His introduction to the game created the kind of personality around the support position that we've since learned to love about other characters like Lee Sin, Rise, or LeBlanc. Madlife quickly became known as one of the game's brightest support stars, something that was a bit of an oxymoron in the game's early years. And his flashy plays inspired people, including Invictus Gaming's Baolan, to consider the support role and the gruesome impact a talented Thresh player could have on the bot lane. Everybody is there though. Oh, the bandage must barely be so Flash does it, it's Madlife! Shen coming in as well! Thresh was picked or banned in over 60% of games at World Season 3. By 2014, the champion was clearly a strong pick in the hands of a mechanically inclined support. And Mata, another Korean superstar, was showing unbelievable Thresh play alongside the more typical Enchanter supports as well. As part of Samsung White, Mata wasn't simply a chaperone to the team's AD carry, Imp. He was a hunter, known for roaming with his jungler Dandy at a time when this was far rarer than today. And he was an absolute terror in the bottom lane and in team fights, especially when he got his hands on Thresh. What decided to do when they sent Luke with top lane to get all this farm here? Fight in mid lane. Amazing, getting hit up pretty hard. He does get hooked in, but the rest of the team is there. This could be Dandy going down. First blood going to Team Solo Mid, but White has acted on this as well. A great flash over from Lust Boy, but that could be Dade or Pawn rather exactly what he wants. Pearson's gonna get knocked away. Oh, it does. They finalized the kill. The ignite. Samsung White became world champions in 2014, and Mata became the first and only support to become the tournament's MVP. And when it was time to pick his world skin, well, of course he picked Thresh. But as the years went on, Mata didn't always use the skin. In fact, he saw it as something he had to continually earn. And he was actually interviewed and they said, why do you never use your skin? And he said, well, I don't think my performance has been good enough to justify using it. He used it once. It's fun how little things like that, if he does play Thresh and he shows the Samsung white skin at this tournament, that will show you that he's like ready to go, that he's reared up and he's looking to once again be the player that was on everyone's lips after 2014. Thresh was popular at the 2015 World Championship too the highest pick ban percentage of any support. In fact, even among fans, he was one of the most popular champions in the game. By this point, it was easy to see why. The champion's iconic visual and sound design had found followers even outside the game, while on the Rift, he was a highlight machine that rewarded getting inside your opponent's head. Well, camping on the <laughs> In a lot of trouble. Oh, 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 he got it on the move. lantern, I can't believe it! In 2017, looking back at the champion's design, then-design director Greg Ghostcrawler Street felt Thresh was one of the finest champions Riot had produced. When you look in terms of support, he's always way up at the top. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with him delivering really well on a lot of these different pillars. So let's talk about satisfying gameplay. I mean, he has a hook, he has flay, which is a huge skill curve and like getting that ability to work correctly. He has the, the box. A lot of these are, he is fairly hard to learn and, and very hard to master. But League changed and Thresh's kit that once seemed so overloaded with options was increasingly just average. So Thresh definitely has certain matchups that are not favorable, you know, especially into 
poke or enchanter supports. There are certain lanes, certain matchups that he just can't really interact with, uh, that Thresh can't all in and he will get bullied out of lane. And in those matchups, he's not as strong. A great historical example of this is Worlds 2016, where he wasn't picked at all. And even into the next year, although some players were starting to pick him up again in the summer, by the time we got to Worlds 2017, we had that infamous Arden Sensor meta, the Enchanter support meta. You saw him drop off again. Still, even if the champion wasn't considered top tier, a gifted Thresh player could always leave their mark, even when the odds are against them. Yeah, for me, TSM 3-0, the problem that we've seen highlighted by Clutch, even in their most recent weeks, they don't do very much on the map. They lost some games where Febby's literally sitting mid, pushing as his bot lane's getting dove. You need to have a more proactive playstyle in the playoffs. Yeah, I'll be very surprised if Clutch Gaming wins this series. I'm going TSM 3-0, trying to get it accurate. In 2018, at the LCS Spring Playoffs, Clutch Gaming were down a game against the heavily favored TSM. But Clutch's support Hakuho, a long-term member of the Cabal of Thresh, reminded everyone of the Chain Warden's paralyzing gaze. Lyra decides, okay, that's fine, we're just gonna go Whoa. for 50 and see that, but the hook comes through! And now both TSM bottom laners gonna be in some trouble. Spin, still trying to walk away from this one, but Apollo's got the damage, one more auto attack should do it! Can he find it? Oh, Hakuho, who rips the soul right out of him! Oh, hanging around Lyra there as well, five men now, as Methy gets pulled in! And that's the kind of hook you need. No big front line there for TSM. Hakuo, oh. it's like it's a point and click. TSM's on the retreat. Featherman looking for the never move. Not able to find it on the Bjergsen. Oh. But the death sentence! Hakuo is a freaking monster this game. Hakuho showed his Thresh prowess even in the late game, but TSM didn't respect it enough to ban it specifically. So in two more games, he made them regret that decision. Clutch Gaming will be the first organization to deny them their pass to the semis and will earn their spot in Miami. Oh my goodness. History in the making on the stage here today. Clutch Gaming ended TSM, and Hakuho's Thresh was a key part of it. It was a reminder that for those who spend the time, Thresh can carry games. Hakuo was just going insane with his point and click ability, basically just hooking people left and right. It was it was absurd. I mean, I was not expecting him to be able to pull off that kind of a play. In 2019, the champion was back in the mix. And a big part of that was Fun Plus Phoenix's Crisp. As FPX ran through the bracket at Worlds, Crisp's Thresh went undefeated in four games. And again, despite that, it was never banned against him. But Tian secures it. There's the hook coming in. And Xerxes already stunned up and locked down. No scaring. With the blast gun, will knock them back. But Humanoid's not in the best of shapes now. LWX going low, dodging around as much as he can. GPO. The kill comes out. GPO doing a lot of work here. But Doinby can step back forward. Looking for the cold and will heal him up a bunch. Humanoid is down. And now No scaring and Kobe have to run for the hills. There goes that oh. death charge. The flash comes out. That's a fantastic Eon ultimate. Battleland's going to be the first to fall here. No, it's actually wrong. One, two, three. Invictus just get dumpstered. For Crisp, Thresh was an outlet to express his playmaking and mechanical ability, and it helped him win a championship. And Fun Plus Phoenix are your world champions! Although he joked beforehand that he would choose a pike skin to take it away from G2 if he won, Crisp picked Thresh, becoming the second player in history to get a world skin for the champion. Even though newer champions might offer even more options or bulkier kits, the skill ceiling of Thresh has continued to attract talented acolytes who bring his influence to the very top level of competition. But not all supports, even those with world championships under their belts, immediately pledged their souls to Thresh. Some, like Core JJ, had to be coaxed. Before LCS Summer 2020, Core JJ had played the champion only a handful of times on stage. But as he teamed up for his first season with his new rookie ADC Tactical, Core JJ threw himself into a champion that he had mostly ignored. I thought you didn't like Thresh either, which I think is funny that you just blind picked it because <laughs> when I played with you, you said that Thresh was just a whatever champion. Yeah, yeah. Actually, at that timing, my Thresh was not good enough. I think you played with uh, disadvantage. I see, I see. Like my, my stress got improved since last year. Summer split, I think. <laughs> and he was actually incredible at it. Across summer season and playoffs, 
Thresh was one of Core JJ's most played champions, with a 75% win rate. And although he's still only got 20 career games under his belt on Thresh, he's already one of Core JJ's best champions in terms of win rate. Turning things around here as TSM try to engage. Brox is going to keep the rest of TSM occupied. Broken Blade is already killed. Now Impact still has the ulti to keep this train a rolling as the damage pours through and Abjurikson Tactical grabs himself a double kill. Who needs a soul when you can take a Nexus? In the end, maybe the most surprising thing is that for a support as accomplished and respected as Core JJ, it took so long for him to pledge himself to Thresh. But the Chain Warden has a habit of pulling you in. Hook, line, and sinker. The champions played at the support position are often dictated by the meta, but that's why Thresh is so special. He's always a threat. His most faithful adherents will always be ready to lock him in. And when they do, they remind us that within every support that loves Thresh, there lurks a monster. Nowhere to hide. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.